We're going to see Cody Elbrecht and with Super Stick Transmissions. They built this transmission that we're using. It's an NV5600 built to spec for 750 horsepower. We don't have that much horsepower, but this transmission could handle it if we wanted to put it there. He did a great job with this transmission. It's built for racing. Uh, we, it would perform very well on the track if we took it out there. I just really like the way he's building transmissions, so we're gonna go check out his shop. If anyone wants to start a truck camper racing club, we're down. Yep, <laughs> I'll race you. <ya. laughs> so this is where the bulletproof transmissions are made. Let me take you to a tour of what we're doing today. Smash that like button and please subscribe. This is the dirty room. This is where everything gets torn down. Everything from transfer cases to you name it. If it's getting built or rebuilt, it comes in here first. This is where it gets disassembled. We go over all the parts, what everybody needs. Um, kind of assess what all they've broken. <laughs> this is one we pulled out of a ZF5. It's a Ford 5-speed. This was supposed to be one piece. Oops. And the uh, customer was saying that he was downshifting and it locked up in fifth. So what had happened was this had broke and it had spun. And when it spins, it's gonna it's gonna tighten up against that bearing back there and just lock it into gear. So our parts washer, we wash all the cases. Every now and then we'll put gears and stuff in here. Um, it goes in dirty and comes out really clean. We hand wash everything here. Um, got a little submersible pump set up. This is our 100 ton press. This guy, uh, this guy will break things. G56s, uh, counter shaft, take about 85 to 90 tons to get those apart. And it's all air driven. Oh, hey, I'm Cody. Oh, hey, I'm Pancho Villa. We're here to talk about kids on leashes. That gonna work? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, hey, I'm Cody. Oh, hey, I'm Pancho Villa. Did you know that cardboard is actually edible? Moving on to the building bay. Evans Bay. <laughs> hey, Evans. He does all of our five speeds. Pretty much any and all five speeds. ZF5s, any 4500s, any miscellaneous different model five speeds. You guys have a stern policy about talking people out of get tracks, right? I don't. They're not my favorite. <laughs> I can, we will rebuild them, but they're not, I don't push that option very well. I, well, some of the parts are discontinued in them, so oh, wow. I'm kind of using that for, for some persuasion, but there has been plenty come through here and we, we do, but we try to talk them into these or upgrading to like you have the 5600. Yeah. They're, those will never come back. Me and Justin will share this bay. This is a six-speed transfer case bay. Got the 5600 going together. It looks complicated, but it's it's not bad. Not too bad. And then we got Mikey. Mikey does all the G56s. Right. How many did you do today? Came a fourth look. Fourth four. today. Fourth one today. Main shafts. The input shaft is going to sit on your bearing up here. So we've got first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and back to sixth. That's the one everybody seems to break in overdrive. Example this little guy didn't really have the best of lives. That's overdrive. Six gear is the smallest gear in that transmission. You did something special to the... 5600s. Um, 5600s. Yes. How'd that work out? Well, yeah. we have not had one of those come back from a failure yet. It's we don't see two. those break until around the 650, 700 and beyond horsepower marks. Oh, okay. And only a choice few of those are having issues. So, I mean, yeah. it's not a big problem, but 
when we see the smallest issue, we address it pretty much right away. So this is what happens to the factory welds. I can't remember the technique they used to do that. It's like a little pin welder. It makes a really small bead in there, which this one has one. This is a stock one. This is kind of what kind of what they look like before I get my hands on them. It's just a tiny, tiny little weld in there. And you put enough twisting force on this, and this happens. So, my solution is I will take weld over the top of it. And we've yet to have one of these fail. Doesn't seem to distort anything, the heat doesn't mess with it, it seems to be pretty, pretty good fix. Since we started doing that, every MG5600 comes in, I don't care what kind of power level it's at, that gets done to it. That cleaned up real nice. Yeah, it did. Oh, hey, I'm Cody. Oh, hey, I'm Pancho Villa. Today, we're going to talk about children learning how to read too early. This little factory weld is no good. It's only good for about 400, 500 horsepower. Any more than that, they break. So we add to it. No more failures. You guys take the time to do it, man. Yeah, we, we do it. Hey, everybody's all interested in the automatic transmission, so I think you're the only one that's really killing it on these manual transmissions. If you like manual transmissions and you like to beat the shit out of them and you want it to take it, call this guy. Yeah. Super strict transmissions is the we way to go. We can't get one to hold for you. We'll figure out a way to make it happen. And it's kind of how this got started. I made a video of me. I got, I was on the Cummins Forum Facebook page. Uh -huh. And, you know, I just got off work and I was just getting on Facebook just to see what was going on. And somebody that knew me tagged me. And I'm, so I'm going through the, the title of this thing. Uh, it was about clutches. You know, single disc versus dual disc versus triple disc. And I think down there, two guys are in an argument. And one guy is saying, dual disc hold more power, but you can't shift fast with them. And the other guy comes in there. He's like, no, you can most definitely shift fast with a multi-disc clutch. And they go back and forth. I chime in at the bottom of this whole deal. They go back and forth for God knows how long. And I got on there. I'm like, of course you can shift fast with a, with a dual disc. You know, even a triple disc. And the other guy's like, well, uh, prove it. Is there, do you have any videos or anything? And I'm like, no, I don't have any videos, but I'll be right back. So I hopped in my truck. Uh, Make one. <laughs> didn't change anything. Didn't change tuning. Didn't do anything. I didn't even change my clothes. I still have my work clothes on. I hopped in the in the deal. I had my cell phone, like an iPhone three at the time. Yeah. You know, take a run down down the down the road. Um, got on some back road, and I had a nice little test pad where I used yeah. to run. I could almost get full throttle there. And uh, pull off the road, and I'm sitting there waiting for cars to go by. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, how am I gonna video this? You know, I can't. I've got to steer <laughs> and shift, and I've got an iPhone. So I looked in my back seat, and I had a roll of like masking tape. And I'm like, okay, so I put my phone, hit it on record, put it on my passenger door panel, and I taped right over the screen, you know, the little camera was up in the top. And I kind of sat back in my seat and looked at it, I'm like, that'll work, you know, so I waited for cars to go by, and I started out first gear and just ripped through first through six all the way down the road and got it, I don't know, what, 120 miles an hour or whatever, just to solve that small little argument on Facebook. So I get on there and I post that. That video blew up. That thing, if I'm not I mistaken, saw it has one. like 4 million views on it yeah. right now. So it got saved and shared out of that, and it just exploded. So then, everybody wanted to know who built the transmission, what kind of clutch it was, where they can get it done. The guy that taught me how to do it, he did it full time. I was still welding at the time. So I would send him him. I'm like, yeah, you know, he and I built mine, but he's, he does it full time. It's what he does. Just send your transmission to him. He'll take care of you. And I didn't ever really talk to him a whole lot about how many I'd sent over there. And, you know, this guy, he's in his 50s, and he was, you know, not the best of health, but he was still knocking him out. And uh, he just called me one day. He's like, what are you doing right now? I'm like, I'm just kind of sitting on the swing on the sidewalk. Why, what's going on? He's like, no, no, what are you doing for a living right now? I'm like, well, I don't know, kind of torn between jobs, welding here and there. He's like, you sent me, like, 15 transmissions in the past two or three weeks. I can't do this. I'm working by myself. <laughs> He's like, why don't Time you come you over? To start working on yeah, why don't you come over here and give me a hand? You know, you you know what's going on. You know how to do these things. And so I did. You know, he was an hour away from me. I'm like, well, when you I can come over there Monday, it's like on a Wednesday. 
He's like, yeah, you can come start for me over here Monday. You know, we'll just work side by side. Just help me get some of these out of here because they're getting backed up. I'm like, well, yeah, I can go over there Monday or whatever. He's like, no, it's like 7 o'clock in the afternoon right now. I'm in the evening. He's like, come over right now. So come over tonight. Sure, you know, I can I can do that. You know, what are we going to do in, you know, three or four hours? And uh, we built an entire transmission, which uh, back then, that was a big deal. You know, we were doing like one a week. Yeah. We did one in the evening, you know. He, and I, he was really smart with it. He knew more of the history and the old school ways of doing it. I kind of had some of the new school stuff. We kind of just merged. It just went together really well. So we got those, I don't know, 13, 15 transmissions, whatever it was. We got those done, and we're like, it's like, well, what do we do now? He's like, well, I don't know how much money you got. I'm like, I don't know. I saved up about four or 500 bucks over the couple of weeks, you know. He's like, he's like, I'll put in, I'll put in 500 bucks. You put in 500 bucks. We'll go buy a thousand dollar core. So we did. I went. I went online. I found a core. You know, it seemed to be in pretty decent condition. Bought it. We knew we had thousand bucks overhead in it, and then we added uh, X number of parts. So we had a number that we had to break even at, and then we had the uh, money making numbers. And he's like, "We got to have like 2,300 bucks. If you can sell it for 2,800, we'll be in real good shape." I'm like, "Okay, I'll see what I can do." You know, that was uh, say Tuesday night. Wednesday morning, I go over to the to the shop. I beat him out there. I'm over there putting it on a pallet and stuff. And he always dealt with locals, so he comes out there. He's like, what the hell are you putting that thing on a pallet for? You know, I'm like, I'm getting ready to ship it out. Like, Where the hell are you shipping it to? You know, what are you, what are you talking about? Did you even sell it? And I was like, yeah, I sold it last night. I said, well, did you get what you were asking for? I was like, yeah, I sold it for 3200 bucks. He's like, how the hell did you sell it for 3200 bucks overnight? <laughs> so, power of Facebook, you know, he was old school. But anyway, so he was my first customer as that's kind of when we established Super Stick Transmissions. Anyways, time goes on. Uh, I worked with him side by side for a couple years, then his health got really bad. He's like, look, you know what you're doing, you're really good at this. You picked up just about everything I know how to do um, and beyond. I went ahead and kind of made the move uh, to my own shop. And that was in, that was at the end of 2016. I moved out on my own. And I went and bought the press and some other stuff, some little cleaning deals. It just kind of never slowed down. <laughs> Anyways, in the in the process, my wife Mar, she finally uh, started dealing with shipping and taking some of the phone calls. She kind of helped organize everything, taking payments. So, anyways, I hired a hired a help in the shop, and she was running the books and, and working on shipping for me. In the day, we've got 60, 70 <coughs> transmissions. We we're tearing them down in the same place we're building them, cleaning parts and ordering parts. We had incoming parts coming in, transmissions going out in the same room, and it was it was tough. Still, yeah. still managed to get it done, and we were still growing as that happened. Finally. We just kind of set a date. We're like, we're moving in on this date, no matter what. Finished or not, we're we're coming in here. You know, we'll paint the things outside on a spool, you know, a wooden spool, whatever it may be. So we've got to just get the room to put all this stuff. About five weeks ago, six weeks ago now, um, we were working in the shop that Thursday. Friday we were kind of off, but Thursday we were working full force in that shop. Monday we opened the doors here. Wow. Shut down. Minimal. It was tough. Everybody I knew, which luckily I know a lot of guys that with trucks and trailers, they came over to the old shop. We loaded. I took my skid steer over there. We loaded all the equipment. I mean, the trailers were way overweight. <laughs> um, brought them over here, dumped everything out, and the next Monday, the guys are working. I'm still unloading stuff. I'm still building rooms, still painting stuff, hanging drywall. I mean, it was. It was. It was working though. But as you know, as busy as we were, and as much as we did, everybody kind of mellowed out. There was more productivity happening. There was more room, more space. Everything just went easier. You know, everything had its place. Our cores are going upstairs. The teardown room has its own designated room. The cleaning room is its own room. Each one of the techs has their own assembly bays. Um, everything was perfect. We got a parts room. She's got her office now. You know, I can actually step out into the main part of the shop and be on the phone where it's quiet. <laughs> My name is Mara. And what do you do? I run, I run everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. So, anyways, that's it for the tour of. I don't know. I just walked through our shop, so I don't know how they do it. Right now, the manual diesel world record in the quarter mile is a 10.2, which is one of our transmissions, uh, Duramax. So my goals with this is to beat that. If I can run a 9.99. I'll be stoked if I run faster than that, then that would just be incredible. Hi, I'm Cody. Does your radiator leak? I have a tech tip for you. You can prevent this from happening by not having any coolant or water in it. The drivetrain under this thing looks 
Everything, everything's powder coated. <laughs> so the transmission in here is our first ever what we call our magic stick. It is we took our normal synchronizer modifications and went way farther. Uh, not only did we modify the synchronizer rings, we went ahead and moved on to the gear side of things. Can't say exactly what we did, but we removed a lot of material in places that slow shifts down. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be able to shift this thing anywhere between 4,500 to 5,500 RPMs, about as quick as we can move our hands. That works out and it stays together. Uh, right now the truck weighs about between 4,780 to 4,800 pounds. If we can stay above 1,000 horsepower at that weight, physics will allow it to run in the 990s. So I have to have a almost perfect pass, but we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can to get there. Everything's built to do exactly just that. I think this thing could run anywhere between 80 pounds of boost, probably to 110 pounds of boost. Wow. Which we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that we'll see how that we'll see how that plays out. I do have a weight skate on it, so I will I'll adjust it accordingly. Of course there's no practical reason to run that much boost through it, but it will be capable of it. A lot of tuning I'll get just from watching the hood stack. Um, sitting in the driver's seat at night, you can see if you've got a, if you've got a flame or a candle coming out of it, that's, that usually means you're tuned pretty much spot on. That's maximizing your power. If you can hold a candle at wide open throttle, that's a really good thing. Definite source of, of uh, visually seeing power. Are you one of the people that prefer to sleep in a sleeping bag? Use it as a hammock. That way if it catches on fire, you fall down and wake up. That gonna work? Mm, it's a little bit big. Oh hey, I'm Cody. I'm Pancho Villa. If you don't use snap-on tools, are you really a mechanic? In reality, you can put this directly on there and not have any issues with the injectors you were running. But in this scenario, the guy that built the pump, the guy that built the injectors, they know each other and they got them where they work perfect. Nice. This is a P7100 built by Seth Farrell. It's a 13 millimeter pump. The factory one is 12. Not only is it a 13 millimeter pump, it's a stage five 13 millimeter pump, which is pretty much a maxed out bigger pump. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you've heard of like the 3200 RPM governors, the 4Ks, the 5Ks. This one's open. Oh. This one can allow it to rev up to 6500, 7500 RPMs. The guy that built it, Seth, I talked to him, I'm like, hey, I've never dipped into this before. What, am, what do I expect? He said, man, when you first start it up, you know, after you get it broken and everything, whenever you get on the throttle, he said, it's going to feel like, like a runaway situation. Like diesels run away, they get, it gets very scary. He's like, it's going to feel that way because that's exactly what it's going to do. It will fuel until you let your foot off the floor, which kind of made me excited. <laughs> I'm like, hey, let's do this. This one is variable throttle up to about 3,200 RPMs. Beyond 3,200 RPMs, it's wide open. There is no restrictions in this thing whatsoever. It will do whatever it's capable of doing. It's got bigger valve springs, it's got 7 16 Manton push rods in it. The runner intake was built by Joker Fab. A friend of mine got it for me. So this is what they call a runner intake. They call it a runner is because each intake valve has got its own runner. It's got its own air supply. So you've got all your boost pressure, volume, everything goes into here and it stays pressurized as your valve opens. Say number one valve opens, it's gonna pull air out of this one and so on and so forth. Whereas your factory intake is casted on the side of the head and it's got a small square um, inlet, just one inlet, and which kind of lands between cylinder three and four in that area. So they get all a whole bunch of air. One and six, it kind of has to go way back in there. They're really restricted. So this is really good for performance, not only performance, but more so for uh, practicality or uh, efficiency. It doesn't hurt anything. You can run this on a bone stock truck and see mileage gains, a little bit of power gain probably. Boost pressure may decrease, volume may go up a little bit. Um, that's a whole other subject of physics. This is really cool. It's all stainless steel. It'll stay polished out pretty much the entire life of this truck. It's pretty cool. I like runners. Runners are badass. Um, in order to get this on the head though, if you look right here in the front, I took the head to a machine shop. I had them cut the original intake shelf off. They do it with a, he milled it off. It's not something you can just bolt on and, and take off. Um, now it is. So anyways, I told him what I was doing. I had this and I said, hey, I need this. Bolt it onto here. And he machined it out perfect. There is no wiggle room on this thing. 
Um, the only thing I had to do then, once I got this, I laid it up there where it goes, marked all the holes, drilled and tapped it, mounted it. Now that's ready to go. This manifold's really cool. A lot of people don't like them because they cost more than like a steed. But they're equal length. All of these are equal length within about 3 sixteenths of an inch. There was an old guy who lives down in Houston. He builds headers for supercars, your Ashton Martins, Maseratis, Lamborghinis, Lotus, stuff like that. He builds these. There's probably some other companies that build them, but that guy in particular built these. Got him to port match it to my head, told him what turbo I was going to mount to the manifold. He machined it out accordingly, put the correct flange on there. So my manifold charger is a Borg Warner S467.7 and then it comes up into a S488. This setup, the pump, 13 millimeter pump, the injectors, these turbos, uh, very capable of 1,000 horsepower. If I tune it correctly, maybe spray a little bit, I could potentially see around 1,400 horse. This thing has never started yet. Waiting on two oil feed lines. If they were here right now, I could start this. Unfortunately, those two oil feed lines are for this turbo and this turbo. Are you tired of losing races by automatics that are running 11s and 12s in the quarter mile? Kick their ass with a super stick transmission that can run in the nines. Are you tired of your friends saying that you're slow because you drive a standard transmission? Get your shift together and get a super stick. Oh, hey, I'm Cody. I'm Pancho Villa. <laughs> Are you tired of your friends saying that you're slow race truck because on Smash that like button and subscribe with all the other subscribers because there's a gazillion subscribers on here because we're doing all this fun shit. Completely Disassembling this first gen, I waited until he got that off before I said that. It took way longer than I thought, and now I just, I, we ruined it. <laughs>